Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Strauman Arena of Confidence. My name is Francesca, and I'll be hosting today's session with Professor Kashai from the University of Mainz, and we will talk about non-surgical treatment with Mdogain FL. Welcome, Professor Kashai. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for being with us today. So um, today we will speak about what might be considered as the, the next generation in periodontal regenerative therapy enabled by Mdogain FL. Um, and this could be something that could be considered as periodontology 2.0 if we want. Could you elaborate a little bit on where we stand today, uh, where we're coming from, and so basically what is Perio 1.0? Okay, very good uh, question. So when we are looking at the development of regenerative periodontal therapy over the last 30, uh, 30 years, uh, we can see that a lot of uh, clinical treatment approaches have been proposed for the treatment of periodontally compromised teeth, uh, particularly uh, teeth with uh, deep pockets associated with uh, intra-bony defects. And when looking at all these different uh, clinical treatment approaches, we can actually uh, um, distinguish between two main uh, areas, which have also been the focus of research. And this is on one side the area of the biomaterials or the products. And uh, from uh, today's point of view, we can uh, state that we have uh, the barrier membranes, uh, we have uh, different uh, graft materials of different origin, uh, and we have the biologics, uh, like for example, the animal matrix derivative and the combination uh, therapies. Uh. And all of them actually showed uh, uh, some significant clinical improvement in intra-bony defects when compared to open flap uh, debridement alone. Uh. So this is the aspect of the biomaterials. On the other hand, we have the aspect of the surgical approach. Uh, and this is interesting to look at. Uh, so where we started historically, uh, we can say uh, we raised uh, large flaps uh, to gain uh, access uh, to the defects, uh, all uh, up to the mid of the 90s uh, when the papilla preservation flaps were introduced to periodontal regenerative therapy with the aim to preserve the interdental soft tissue, to facilitate primary flap closure, and also to ensure post-operative uh, wound uh, stability. Then over the years, also the, the principles of microsurgery have been implemented into regenerative periodontal therapy. Uh, so the use of uh, some kind of magnification, uh, like microscope or loops, uh, the use of microsurgical uh, instruments. And then uh, we can say that in the last uh, decade, uh, the techniques uh, have become more and more patient-oriented, uh, more patient-friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. So with the introduction of the minimal invasive surgical technique, uh, the modified uh, minimal invasive surgical te technique, also the single uh, flap approach. Uh. And then the latest uh, technique uh, that was uh, described uh, was uh, the, the minimal invasive uh, non-surgical technique, uh, so this uh, technique is uh, avoiding uh, incisions and sutures at all, so it's a completely non-invasive, uh, uh, non-surgical approach. So what we can see uh, over the decades, we started uh, with large, uh, unstable flaps, uh, then we uh, started to open the flap in the area of the interest, uh, in the area of the intra-bony uh, defect, then we started to raise the flap only from the buccal side, uh, and now uh, we are uh, um, at the end uh, with the flapless approach. Fantastic, thank you for walking us uh, through this evolution, and basically I see that the pr procedures are, have become less and also minimally, uh, minimal invasive over time. Could you tell us a little bit about the current approaches in the non-surgical treatment concepts and also what type of adjuncts um, clinicians can use today in yeah. these type of treatment concepts? So when uh, looking at uh, non-surgical uh, periodontal therapy in general, uh, we can state that uh, this is an effective uh, treatment uh, procedure. So you can see here that the baseline cl clinical situation uh, and then uh, the um, classic uh, traditional scaling and uh, root planning, uh, and we can predictably uh, reduce uh, periodontal probing depth, uh, we can gain uh, some attachment, we can re reduce the, the amount of periodontal pathogens and uh, uh, bleeding on uh, probing. 
but also here in the field of non-surgical uh, periodontal therapy, uh, we have uh, some uh, evolution over time, uh, so uh, some uh, uh, advancement. Uh. And uh, so the principles of minimal invasiveness uh, have also been uh, implemented in non-surgical periodontal therapy. So we have today uh, uh, smaller hand instruments. Uh, we have fine uh, tips uh, for the ultrasonic scalers. Uh, we have different uh, laser systems. Uh, we have also the, the air polishing devices. Uh, then we have the attempt uh, to uh, further improve uh, the, the clinical outcomes of non-surgical periodontal therapy by using uh, this uh, endoscopic uh, treatment protocols. And we have, as you already mentioned, uh, the adjunctive treatment modalities, uh, which have become very popular uh, in the last few years. Uh, so starting with uh, the adjunctive use of systemic antimicrobials, local antimicrobials, which can be local antibiotics uh, or chlorhexidine gel, chlorhexidine chips, uh, also the, the subgingival irrigation uh, with uh, different uh, antiseptics. So they aim also to further improve uh, the uh, clinical outcomes of non-surgical periodontal therapy and try to reduce the need for some additional therapy. Fantastic. And uh, of course, we know that you have been involved in two multi-center studies. Uh, during the development of Emdogain FL. And before we dive into uh, more details about the studies, could you um, talk to us a little bit about Emdogain FL, what it is? So this is a new uh, clinical approach, uh, actually combining uh, the use of animal matrix derivative uh, with a non-surgical uh, treatment approach. So um, um, in the last, uh, let's say, decades, uh, we used uh, Amnogain always associated with the surgical approach. Mm -hmm. So we gained uh, access to the uh, defect, uh, we cleaned the defect, and we used the Amnogain in order to promote uh, periodontal uh, regeneration in this defect. But we know today that um, the Amnogain, apart from its regenerative capabilities, has also the properties to improve uh, the soft tissue uh, wound healing. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, um, this makes it uh, very interesting as an adjunct uh, to non-surgical periodontal therapy to further improve the clinical outcomes and reduce the need for additional therapy, uh, particularly um, um, surgical approach. Fantastic, that, that sounds... And this is what we actually also investigated in right. these uh, two clinical uh, studies. Fantastic, that, that sounds uh, very exciting and uh, we definitely want to go into a little bit more details about the studies. Can we? Look at the one where you investigated on the residual pockets. Yes. This was a multi-center uh, randomized controlled uh, clinical uh, trial. And you can see here that uh, altogether five study centers uh, were included. Uh, and the study was conducted on 33 patients uh, presenting uh, with residual pockets uh, ranging from five to nine millimeters uh, with bleeding on probing. So we are talking about the uh, residual pockets uh, following cause related uh, therapy. So the, um, all of these um, patients uh, received uh, some mechanical de debridement uh, by means of uh, ultrasonic uh, scaling, uh, um, also the use of hand instruments uh, followed by root surface conditioning with uh, EDTA for two minutes. Uh, and in the test sites, uh, we applied uh, the Amdogain sub uh, gingivally. The control site received no additional treatment. Uh, the patients came for maintenance after three, six, and nine months. Uh, and the final uh, clinical examination was performed uh, after 12 uh, months. Uh. And when uh, looking at uh, clinical outcomes, we can see a uh, significant higher reduction of probing pocket death and bleeding on probing uh, with the combination therapy in comparison uh, to uh, mechanical debridement alone. And so based on these clinical results, we concluded uh, that the adjunctive use of Amdogain during uh, subgingival reinstrumentation of residual periodontal pockets uh, improved their kin clinical outcomes uh, in comparison to mechanical debridement alone. Great, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, now we're also curious about the second study, which we know is in uh, preparation to be published. Could you share a little bit about the outcomes of that? Yeah. 
the second uh, study was um, very uh, similar with respect to the study design. Okay, it was also a multi-center uh, clinical trial, including altogether four study centers. It was also designed as a split mouth randomized controlled clinical trial. And uh, we included a total of uh, 49 patients uh, uh, which had at least two sites uh, per uh, contralateral quadrants with probing pocket depth of five to eight uh, uh, millimeters. Uh, so here uh, we looked uh, at this uh, treatment concept uh, in the initial phase of therapy. Right. So the first study focused on residual pockets. Uh, this study focused on deep uh, uh, periodontal pockets in the initial phase of uh, therapy. The treatment protocol was here a little bit uh, different uh, compared to the first study. So we had here a minimal invasive uh, subgingival instrumentation uh, using uh, ultra-fine uh, um, ultrasonic tips, uh, micro -curettes. We used, we used also some kind of magnification. So a microscope was allowed or a loop. And uh, the test sites were treated uh, by means of root surface conditioning with EDTA for two minutes. Uh, then we had an MDOGAIN application and we had a second application of the MDOGAIN two to three weeks uh, following the first application. Right. So in this study, we performed the reapplication of the MDOGAIN, but without the EDTA reapplication. Uh, the control sites did uh, receive no further uh, treatment. Uh, the maintenance uh, was here after one, three, six and nine months. Uh, and uh, we did the final clinical um, examination at 12 months uh, post-operative. Uh, and we w when we look here at uh, the clinical results after one year, we see uh, with respect to probing pocket death and uh, clinical attachment level, no significant uh, difference between the two treatment approaches after one year. But what we uh, see uh, that we have a higher frequency of sites uh, with uh, final uh, probing pocket death uh, below five millimeters. Uh. So uh, he here we can see um, um, a significant difference uh, between uh, the test protocol and uh, the control um, protocol. And also with respect uh, to bleeding on uh, probing, uh, we found uh, a significant uh, difference uh, between the two treatment approaches favoring uh, the adjunctive use uh, of endogen uh, following non-surgical periodontal treatment. Uh, and so also based uh, on these findings, uh, we concluded uh, that uh, the uh, combination therapy further enhanced uh, clinical outcomes uh, in comparison to uh, non-surgical periodontal treatment alone. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing these uh, exciting results with us today. And uh, I understand that there are clinical benefits and patient benefits associated to the potential use of Emdugain FL uh, in conjunction with non-surgical uh, periodontal therapy. Could you recap for us the clinical benefits and how they're different from, let's say, the classical adjunct? Okay. So we can see that with this uh, treatment uh, protocol, we can further enhance uh, clinical outcomes when compared to non-surgical therapy alone. We can also further uh, reduce the need uh, for an additional therapy, which would be a, a, a surgical approach. Uh, and uh, when compared uh, to, to other adjuncts, uh, Emdogain uh, has uh, the advantage that it has uh, several uh, uh, beneficial um, effects. Uh, and it's not only the, the regenerative uh, capability, but also it's the property to significantly improve uh, the early soft tissue wound healing, which makes it so interesting as an adjunct uh, to non-surgical periodontal therapy. Great. And, uh, you know, if we were to step now into the patient's shoes on, on the other side, what might change for the patient when uh, using Emdogain FL? So this uh, treatment protocol is uh, for sure very uh, patient-oriented and patient-friendly. Uh, so so uh, there are different uh, advantages uh, for the patient. So first of all, it's a really minimal invasive uh, approach uh, with minimal uh, trauma to the soft tissue. So uh, we are uh, having only a, a minimal uh, rate of uh, post-operative uh, uh, patient discomfort. Uh, we have the aspect of the um, treatment chair timer, which is shortened uh, um, when compared to the surgical approach. It's less te uh, technique uh, sensitive. Uh, and for sure, we have also a financial aspect uh, right. because uh, probably the, the costs are, are uh, lower uh, compared to a surgical uh, approach. So uh, there are several advantages uh, for the uh, patients. Yeah, that's, 
that sounds absolutely fantastic. And uh, of course, now after all of this, we're also excited to learn a little bit about the practical aspects and uh, really to understand how it works and the procedure. Yes, yeah, so the uh, procedure itself, uh, it's um, easy but not uh, as easy as uh, that. Okay. Uh, so uh, for sure it's uh, less technique uh, sensitive uh, as a surgical approach, uh, but uh, nevertheless uh, you have to uh, follow a certain uh, treatment uh, protocol. Uh, so you can see here uh, a case uh, with uh, baseline periodontal uh, uh, pocket death uh, ranging about eight uh, millimeters. Uh, the first uh, step is uh, to carefully uh, um, debride uh, the root surface uh, by means of uh, fine ultrasonic uh, tips, uh, uh, followed here by instrumentation uh, wi with uh, micro carets. Uh, so we are trying uh, really to minimize the trauma to the soft uh, tissue. On the other hand, we want a really accurate uh, debridement of the uh, root surface. After that, uh, uh, we are rinsing the pocket, we are applying 24% uh, of EDTA uh, to uh, remove the smear layer from the root surface. Uh, we uh, um, try to stop uh, the bleeding uh, and then uh, we apply uh, the emdogain uh, subgingival uh, to the pocket uh, and the root surface. So this is uh, basically uh, the uh, treatment uh, approach. Fantastic. And uh, one word to PREF gel. So uh, what can you explain to us what it is and uh, why it uh, should be used? So the, the PREF gel is a pH neutral 24% uh, of EDTA uh, solution, uh, which is uh, used uh, uh, to remove the um, uh, smear layer from the uh, root surface. Uh. Uh, so to prepare it uh, for the interaction uh, with the animal the matrix derivative uh, proteins. Uh. And um, again, sorry, back to Emdugain. Um, does it actually need to stay in the pocket? Okay, so uh, when, when we uh, uh, apply the Emdugain uh, to the pocket, uh, we have some interaction uh, with the soft tissue uh, and uh, the root surface, and so the animal matrix uh, derivative proteins can precipitate uh, on to the root surface. And for this to occur, we have to give uh, some time uh, to right. this. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that we have a gel formulation, uh, uh, so we will observe this uh, washout uh, effect uh, from the pocket, uh, which is, however, no reason uh, for concern, uh, because uh, the initial uh, phase is important uh, and the precipitation of the proteins uh, onto the root surface. Uh, this is the important uh, thing. Uh, the gel uh, will wash out uh, with time. Okay, fantastic. And uh, now, a little bit, what are the indications, uh, what patients can clinicians uh, treat with this new product? So, so based on, on the available evidence uh, now we have, uh, can we can use this uh, treatment protocol uh, for uh, the treatment of deep periodontal pockets. Uh, so during the initial phase of therapy, we have also evidence uh, uh, that we can successfully treat uh, deep uh, residual periodontal pockets. Uh, we have also some uh, evidence coming from other studies that we can successfully treat with this approach. Uh, uh, deep periodontal pockets associated uh, with an intrabony defect. Uh, however, we also have to be uh, realistic, uh, so we have no evidence uh, for uh, the treatment of uh, focation involved molars, so the indication uh, would be uh, available on the uh, on the evidence which we have uh, now uh, that we treat single rooted teeth uh, with probing pocket death uh, ranging between uh, five uh, to nine uh, millimeters. Great. And, uh, you know, this sounds all very fantastic and promising new treatment concept that might not be too difficult to implement, but I I'd like to ask you, um, periodontology 2.0, how easy or difficult is it to implement in daily practice? And Maybe could you give us some tips or recommendations for that? So for sure it's uh, easier than a surgical approach. So I would say it's uh, less technique uh, sensitive. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, um, it's not uh, as easy as that, uh, so it's more uh, than uh, a little bit of uh, scaling root planning. Uh, so, so we have uh, really a treatment uh, protocol. Uh, we have to, to perform this uh, uh, very uh, accurate. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, most of the dentists uh, um, 
uh, well trained uh, when it comes to non-surgical periodontal therapy, so it shouldn't be too difficult to implement this uh, treatment pr uh, approach uh, um, in daily practice. Uh. And to your tips or recommendations? So the, the, the tips so um, I would follow this uh, um, minimal invasive uh, uh, non-surgical uh, protocol. Uh, so by using uh, um, this finer uh, ultrasonic tips, uh, microcurrets, uh, you have also the uh, possibility to use uh, very fine uh, instruments uh, to get uh, some visualization uh, of, of the uh, root surface. Uh, and this is uh, basically uh, what I can recommend to the clinician. Fantastic, thank you for sharing that. And um, as a final point, could you also share your thoughts and outlook for this new therapeutic treatment concept? And a little bit back to the question, Perio 2.0, are we there yet? Yes, I, I think uh, we have an uh, interesting uh, um, alternative uh, to the uh, surgical approaches uh, uh, for deep periodontal uh, pockets uh, and also deep periodontal pockets associated with intra bony defects. So when uh, looking at the future, I think uh, we will have a further refinement of the uh, treatment approach uh, so we can uh, further I I improve this, uh, we can modify the, the, the uh, uh, mode of instrumentation, we can use uh, some endoscopes uh, to, to visualize the root uh, surface, so I think uh, it will go more in this direction, we will see some refinement of the um, treatment approach. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Professor Kashai, for being with us today, for sharing uh, your expertise and your experience on this. Uh, we, it was an honor to have you with us. And thank you. Thank you, Professor Kashai. <laughs> and as you know, this was the last session from the Arena of Confidence at IDS. But, of course, I would like to welcome the co-host. Thank you that uh, we're sharing uh, together with me the experience of hosting uh, this program live. So, Lea Marie and Artemis. Thank you guys, thank you, thank you guys. So it was, uh, at least from my side, fantastic experience. I know we all share this and, you know, behind this whole concept there was someone and people who thought about it, who believed in it, who technically enabled it. A lot of technical support, a lot of imagination, a lot of concepts and um, definitely a lot of involvement from uh, everybody. Yes, and a great big thank you also from my side to both of you and to Marcel, who was also our co-host but couldn't, uh, yes. couldn't stay. He had to be taking his train back to Basel, Switzerland today. So, and a great big thanks to our viewers and the team that enabled this to be possible and our speakers. Absolutely. And the over 10,000 viewers uh -huh. who, uh, who spent some time with us this week. So thank you all very much for viewing. I want to say a special thank you to all the experts that joined us this week on stage and shared with us their knowledge and experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much. Yes, and I want to ask just the ladies to stay because uh, in the name of the global management team, I have the pleasure to thank you all. First of all, again, I want to thank all the speakers. I think it was outstanding. 10,000 participants yes. down there. Yes. This is really brilliant. And I want to clean up with something which is really important because it was also me arriving this week and I thought, wow, this is really very professional moderators. However, I had to learn that this is colleagues of mine. <laughs> and we want to say in the name of the management of the Strauman Group, thank you to you. Thank and you I so want to start to introduce to you Artemis Atkins. She is uh, our dental and medical expert in Basel and Artemis, you did an outstanding job. Thank and you I think so this uh, flowers, oh this is just <laughs> a small gift. It was just Thank you. perfect. Thank you so much. Swiss style, we do it three times. Swiss time three. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And Thank yet, you. Francesca De Santi, she is one of our global medical marketing manager. And also here, I have to say, outstanding. Thank I think the combination of your expertise if it comes to those uh, questions we just also realized in the last presentation thank you very much so i'm very pleased this is a small gift thank only thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you very much Sweet. and leah fehrenbach <laughs> as one of our trainee pm so we can see we have a bright future in our organization 
Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward <laughs> also to say, in the name of the management team, thank you to you. And before we are closing the session, I want to ask at least one person who is representing a team which did an outstanding job for five days. Because what we learned here and experienced in this fantastic yeah. arena of confidence, this is really a hard teamwork. The team asked me to introduce you Delphine Villieu. Delphine, please come to us. Delphine! So, Delphine, she is standing for the whole group for this outstanding performance. So it was the team's wish that you are the one who gets the flowers. And this has two reasons. First of all, you did an outstanding job, but it's also your birthday today. <laughs> so can I ask the audience? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Delphine. Happy birthday to you. Happy See you in two years. Thank you. Happy birthday.